Hey everybody, I hope you're doing well. Um, sorry you're the first people I'm talking to this morning and my voice is just a little rough. Um, I have had probably the worst cold I have ever had the past couple of days. It has just been nonstop sneezing and blowing my nose, feeling like I've got like something pinching in at my head right here, like my sinuses have just been out of control. And I'm told that's what happens when your kid starts school for the first time, they bring home all the germs. I'm shooting this on Monday. Um, there's not gonna be a vlog this week. I just, I seriously did not have it in me. I was kicked to the curb with this cold. But this morning I got up and I felt like um, the pressure was out of my head somehow. You know how you get that real like sinus pressure feeling? I wasn't feeling that anymore and I really wanted to shoot this video on some new things that I got from Sephora. I did sort of a Sephora haul that involves several brands that I really haven't used a ton of. Um, Pat McGrath and Charlotte Tilbury and just some different odds and ends here and there. So I thought I'd do a little full face, get ready with me using a lot of those things. I've been playing with these things for about the past four or five days. So I will have some sort of insights to share. I don't know that I'd call this a full on review video on everything, you know, but I've already moisturized. And the first thing I'm gonna put on are these Sugar Lip Wonder Drops. I was very intrigued by these. It says advanced therapy, retexturizing and smoothing gel. And my lips are so, so dry that I can definitely use this. It says dispense a drop and massage it over clean lips and lip contour area until it absorbs can be used daily so let's see how this goes last time I used this I felt like I put on way too much so I'm pacing myself now <laughs> smells good it smells kind of like I don't know vanilla ish a little more vanilla y than like a typical fresh lip balm I feel like those have almost a little lemony scent Okay, it feels like it's absorbed. It's interesting because this makes my lips feel like lightly moisturized, but it, you know, you're not gonna feel goopy or anything on top of your lips. But yeah, my lips need a lot of help today. Here's something I got in my haul that I'm not gonna use in this video. I was actually kind of disappointed. I got this Herborian CC Cream. I feel like I'd heard great things about it. I don't know how I even landed on this on Sephora's site, but I started reading reviews and there were a lot of good reviews. But this only came in a couple of shades. There's Claire, which is me, and then there was one deeper shade so I tried to read the reviews to determine what people were saying like how their skin tone was described and what they used so I thought the lighter of the two would be mine it says high definition radiance face cream and basically what this is if you're not familiar it's kind of like um, throwback to Almay smart shade you know it comes out looking white and then you start to blend it in and I think you'll see that change to more of a beigey color, like a light beige. And I really like the feel of this on my skin and I enjoy the moisture level and the softness that it gives my skin, but it's really like hardly any coverage. The coverage is barely identifiable to me because I was applying this like half my face first to try to really figure it out and I just didn't see it doing much. And the reason why I really wanted to use something different in this video today is because I have another thing that I need to show. I got the Hollywood Flawless Filter from Charlotte Tilbury, which is a product I've been researching. I've been like watching videos on it, like how exactly should I be using this stuff? But I've seen it have really beautiful effects on top of a foundation. So I thought for this video, I'll pull in another foundation that I actually have because this, it doesn't really set up my skin the way I want it to. So I pulled out kind of a rediscovered foundation. I love this foundation, but I haven't used this in a while. This is my NARS um, Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in Vienna. So I think I'm gonna pop this on today. I like the pump. Um, it takes me a couple of pumps of this one, but this has really beautiful coverage and I just love the finish on my skin. But yeah, um, these past few days have been kind of crazy because Belle's birthday, like her actual birthday where she turned fours on September 21st, and so that was Friday, and she went to school and she brought cookies that had like a four on them. And she was so excited to do that. And I guess the class sang happy birthday and it happened to be homecoming day. So they got to do special things um, at school that day anyway. And she just, she had a really good time. And the cutest thing happened as we were walking away from school down the parking lot. This little boy was like running up behind us and I didn't even think he was talking to us at first, but he was, he's like, hey guys, wait, wait. So we stop and Belle turns around and he's like, bye, and then runs back away. <laughs> I thought that was the cutest thing ever. But she had a great day at school, and then we're at home after that eating lunch, and she's like, 
my ear feels funny. My ear hurts. And I'm like, S did you, because you hit your head or something on the side or is it in your ear? And she's like, it hurts in my ear. Oh crap. This kid has yet to have an ear infection. You see that pretty coverage there? I really like that foundation. Very nice. But anyway, with the ear thing, we went to the doctor um, right away. I was not like messing around with that. She has never had one of these before. I wanted to nip it in the bud. We couldn't get into her doctor right away, but the place where we do go offers like an urgent care type deal. So we went there and so they're like, yep, we need to get her on some medicine. So she's got some stuff to take for that. She's had a lingering cold for a while that as you can see, I, I finally came down with. She's got some stuff to tackle some of those symptoms as well. So um, she's already feeling so much better. Like, I don't know, maybe it's been a week now that I feel like eh, something maybe hasn't been 100% right. Now I can see like, what if she's had just a little bit of pressure or just some kind of uncomfortable feeling that she couldn't quite put her finger on to tell me? And it wasn't until Friday that she got to the point where she was like, this hurts because the doctor said it looked pretty red in there. Anyway, I'm so glad that she is feeling so much better now and I think it's only going to continue to improve as you know she finishes out the medication it's 10 days but poor thing on your birthday you gotta go hang out at the doctor's office next up I have a new concealer that I wanted to try this is the Josie Marin vibrancy argon oil full coverage concealer and I ended up with this in the shade fair now that I have it and I've tried it I think I could have gone a little darker but I don't know you're trying to look at the pictures on Sephora's website and determine what you are and sometimes it's it's hard to tell, you know? What really interested me in this is just the fact that I do like Josie Marin's Argon Oil line, and I just, I love the quality of some of her skincare type products, but I've never really associated the brand with doing anything that had major coverage, you know? So I thought now might be the time and it is a really pretty coverage product, but do you see what I mean on how that does seem a little light? And I feel like I'd probably be achieving the best coverage if I had something just a hair darker. I need to get in the store and see it. But as fall and winter go on and my skin inevitably gets a little bit lighter, it might be just right. And you notice now that I've blended it in, it has kind of a nice brightened effect. I can still see just a little circle there. So, um, also this doesn't set too quick. As you can see, this right side was sitting there for a little bit and it's still easy to blend. It's got a little thickness to it and definitely some moisture in there, but it's not the thickness uh, of the Tarte Creaseless Concealer, you know? It's not like super thick and tacky, but it doesn't leave your skin feeling dry either. I would say that's a very reasonable level of moisture and I think this is the kind of concealer that's gonna stay in my rotation for sure. I will keep using this because, I mean, I've had no, no trouble with it. Now the next thing I want to try, this is my first time putting this on actually on top of foundation. I got the Hollywood Flawless Filter, it says for a superstar youth glow, and I was just kind of intrigued by this product. I got it in shade 2, which is light, and I ordered it and then I started trying to look up so many different videos and methods with this. I've seen people apply it like as the softest kind of highlighter on the top of the cheeks. I've seen people use it all over over the skin before they put on foundation so they have like a radiance that shows through. I've seen people use quite a bit of it on top of foundation. I've seen it mixed in with foundation and then applied together. There seems to be a lot of options, but I think what kind of throws people for a loop is how just skin tone it appears in the bottle. And one of the first days I had this, I did put it on just all over my skin just to see what the look would be. And I thought it was actually really gorgeous. But for right now, what I think I'm gonna do is test this out kind of where I might want to highlight. I'm gonna give myself a good amount, like right in here, maybe a little up here on the forehead, a little on the chin, and try it on top of a foundation and concealer look that actually has some coverage and see how it does there. I'm using my little um, Pro Mini Flawless Airbrush from Sephora. I'm just kind of dabbing that in. See the glow that it's kind of giving off? It's just really subtle and it's not sparkly. That blended in there. It blends in so easily. For me, I can really see it when I get it blended in like all around the apple of the cheek because that's just an area that really catches light on my face. It's like it instantly kind of brightened and yet softened up the look of everything. Made it look a little more skin-like. I kind of like it in that manner. 
Now this might be like a totally contradictory step now because now I have powder. This is the Charlotte Tilbury Magic Powder. It says under eye and face. Soft focusing, light diffusing, loose powder. And I have actually really liked this just a little bit on the under eye area. I love the packaging that it's got this little sifter slider thing so you can open some up. Ooh, thunder. You could tap it into your cap. And I don't know if you can tell here, but this is kind of a next level um, brightness. It seems really, really light and almost a little bit of pink in the tone of this. And I'm going to pick up a little bit with my um, e.l.f. small tapered brush. And I don't want to get too much like all on top of this glow that I just applied with the Charlotte Tilbury. But I do want to get a little bit in here. I probably could have applied this first, come to think of it. But just try to set that under eye a little bit. It's one of those things I'm not I'm not sure yet. Like I really like it. I haven't attempted any sort of baking with this powder yet, which I haven't been doing a lot of that period these days. But I feel like I'm just going to need to use it a little bit more to discover the little, you know, hidden details about it as to whether I'm going to like this better than Laura Mercier or as well. I don't know, but to me it does seem pretty brightening, just the tone of it. Now, I ordered a Charlotte Tilbury blush. It would have been my first ever blush from her line that I tried um, outside of like those little to-go palette things that she makes. Just one of those freestanding blushes that kind of looks like it's got a nipple right in the middle of it, but it broke, so I'm gonna have to do something about that. That was kind of disappointing, but I did recently, not in this order, but a little while ago, I got this Kevin Aquan. Um, it's the contour book, and I figured, well, okay, this is the backup plan, because this has a lot of different things in it, and I can chat a bit more about it in this video, because I have been using it on and off for several weeks, and now I can finally give some insight, but I had heard so many good things. I had asked on Twitter quite a while ago, like, what are some high-end things that you think are truly worth it? And so many people referenced the um, contouring powders from Kevin Aquan, and so I've, it's got Sculpting Light, Sculpting Medium, and Sculpting Deep. Sculpting Light and Medium seem really close, um, but I'm taking the Sculpting Light right now. I'm getting a little bit of it there in the hollow of the cheek area. The light and medium really look like natural shadows to me. They're very, very cool. And so they're a true like contour powder. And so if you like that tone on your skin, um, if you don't like things getting too warm or too much like a bronzer, those two are just really fantastic. I don't feel like they look dirty, but they just look like a natural contour. And then I sometimes go a little with the medium and then pop into the deep as well when I'm going around my hairline. And then I feel like I can get a little more just color up in there. See that? But speaking of palettes, guys, I have also placed my order and gotten in a lot of different holiday things that I'm interested in reviewing. And I'm so excited that it's kind of that time of year again. Um, you know, I'm not calling it holiday time yet, but holiday palette time is a season of its own that starts a little in advance of the holidays. And I'm just so excited to get testing and get going on some of that stuff. I have been playing around a little bit in the midst of some of these new things too. But yeah, really pleased with those contour shades. And then there's this thing up here. It's called the Neo Bronzer. And see how it's almost like glowy blush into true blush into bronzer. And you can really like customize the shade that you end up with on your skin when you're going between those. So today I'm going to kind of keep it more among the blush and the sort of glowy highlightery type shade, but it's really cool because you can totally customize the intensity. I really like the idea of that product, and yesterday I full-on went into the blush and into the bronzer side, and it was a very like Too Faced Pink Leopard kind of feel with that. It looked blushy still, but it was much richer, deeper, just a bronzy blush. It was very cool. Gosh, when you if you go to the doctor and you're sick, the first thing they should do is just put a fresh application of blush on you and be like, okay, now now look at yourself in the mirror. How do you feel? Well, I feel a little bit better seeing that blush. It's health put back in the face. So that is really fresh looking, really, really pretty. We have Flash, which looks a little more peachy in the pan, and then Beam. And Flash, it's interesting. Like, it does not swatch pretty. Swatch pretty. It doesn't really seem to hang together well. It's nothing that I'd look at and think, wow, that's an impressive looking highlight. Like, it's not along the lines of what a Becca highlight looks like when you swatch it. Beam is a bit more that way. It's kind of a buttery looking highlight. It's got that soft gold quality to it. I don't always love the look of a highlight in that tone on my skin. It just kind of depends on my blush or my bronziness level. But here's what fascinates me. The other day I really gave Flash a chance in application because a lot of times swatches don't tell the whole story. So I put my brush in it 
tapped it off and it gives me kind of a pretty gleam on the skin that you would not expect from the swatch. As I always say, especially with anything that you think might be the least bit flaky, give it a chance and really buff it in. And it looks like dewy skin. I would have not expected that. Like you try to see that in a concentrated swatch and it's just not what that product's about. It's meant to be seen in this sheared out, kind of buffed on manner. And it looks like absolute glossy skin. It's really cool. I would not have expected that though. And even to look up close, like you, you just wouldn't think it, that's that, like that's that product. I'm not seeing a ton of flex like I thought I would see. Not the story when it's on the skin. It looks very, very pretty and very dewy. And I don't feel like I applied that much. Pretty crazy, huh? I also am going on top of a little bit of some Hollywood Flawless filter, so keep that in mind. On the brows, I just went ahead and did those off camera. They weren't Sephora products. It was just my e.l.f. brow pencil, my L'Oreal Boost and Set, and I primed my lids with the Urban Decay Anti-Aging Primer Potion. And so now I'm ready for eyeshadow. I have two newish things. One thing that I got here is the Gen Nude Neutral Eyeshadow Palette from Bare Minerals. I love the little image there on the front. It looks kind of like foamy water, like um, coming up on the sand or something. Isn't that pretty? There were several varieties which were all basically neutral, but I chose the one called Neutral, and I feel like it's kind of a variation on rose gold. You've got a couple different rose gold type colors, um, rich matte browns, and then some light matte highlights. It's a pretty palette. I enjoyed the look that I got with it. The textures are great if you like um, Bare Minerals shadows, generally speaking. It's a really fantastic formula, but as far as this video goes and the try-on, I feel like like you could almost imagine what this would look like on my eyes. So the thing that's a bit more unpredictable is this. I got my first Pat McGrath eyeshadow palette. I cannot believe the luxurious quality of this. The gold plate on the back, it says, Mothership, use without caution. Shade throwing and eye ecstasy may result with prolonged use. It's weighty, it, like you open it up, you've got this mirror with the beautiful, like luxurious beveled edge, which is so cool. And then here are the eyeshadows we're dealing with, folks. We've got several mattes, we do. We've got a matte plum, a matte medium brown, and a matte dark brown. This shade is kind of a soft shimmer, sort of a pearlescent quality to that. Um, you've got a couple of pretty glittery shades here with more of a taupey glitter, a golden glitter. This reddish shade isn't so much glittery, just has a fantastic red sheen, but then you definitely do notice the sparkle in these three here. One more pinky, this one goes more golden, and this one has a fun little kind of greenish shift. I've used this a couple times now. Here's my experience with it in a nutshell. This is a palette you want to get if you truly want the glitz and glamour, like it's a high glam type of palette. With the way the sparkle finishes are in here, like don't get it if you're just thinking, oh I kind of like neutral eyeshadows, but if you're not a huge sparkle fan, like it's in here. This is for an intensely glamorous look, I feel. Because your mattes are very basic shades that you've probably got quite a few times over in different palettes. But what kind of makes the palette special are these different textures and the different sort of layering opportunities also with these shades over on this end. So it's a 10 color palette and in that sense it isn't huge, but it does offer a lot of directions you can go with the whole layering idea. And here's how the glitter has behaved for me. I actually felt like it was clinging without even using a special primer, just using my normal Urban Decay uh, anti-aging primer. Um, the glitter was clinging really well actually and I was even building up some glitter on a look and I thought is that actually staying in place like I wasn't really seeing a lot of fallout on my skin until much much later in the day I felt like my whole look was kind of breaking down a little bit it is kind of a micro fine glitter so I think that helps um, and maybe there's something in the formula of the shadows that's helping it kind of bond in when you get it on your eyes because I noticed a profound difference between like the glitter in these and the glitter in my Too Faced anniversary palette that I've been talking about recently. These seem to just kind of stick on my eyelids better, but ultimately looking at the course of an entire day, my entire day's worth of wear, the shadow look didn't last as well as just say a normal eyeshadow non-glittery look that I might do because eventually things kind of started to move around. But I'm going to take the lighter of the two matte browns and get this going in my crease. It might be a little deeper crease shade than I might normally start with, like just thinking about transition colors and whatnot, but that's okay. But yeah, isn't this crazy? This is my first experience with the Pat McGrath 
line and I got some lip products too and I think it was just something I was kind of skeptical about like I just looked at the price and I was like oh my gosh but this palette looks so pretty and the looks that I'd seen people doing with it I thought wow it looks like it might be something special but I was surprised when I got it home the thing that surprised me was just how much glitteriness there actually is and if you watch my review of that Too Faced um, Tutti Frutti collection like I don't mind a glittery eye. I just don't like when glitter travels. And I don't especially like it in like cheek products. But if you can give me a glitter on the eye that's gonna stay put and stay in place, I mean, okay. So I've got kind of my naturally contoured look going there. And then I think I'll deepen it up a bit with the darker brown too. Just let that layer in there in my outer corner some. So ultimately, I feel like I really concentrated the deeper brown in the outer corner and then just started buffing whatever was left on my brush all over the rest of the crease. Then I think I'm gonna do a little bit of the red and I'm going to show you what the finish of this is like. This looks more like a straight up metallic to me. This one is free from actual glittery sparkle. I'm just gonna pat that on the sort of outer half of my lid. If you really appreciate variety and texture, you know, this is a palette you might enjoy because it's not just either matte or shimmer. It's matte, it's you got a pearlescent kind of shimmer, you got a metallic, and then you've got these kind of like topper type shades, which don't just have to be topper, but you know, like uh, transformative colors, I would call them. Okay, so there's that. I wanna do a little splash of this goldeny shade and work that in right kind of inner corner and maybe coming up over the red a little. What do we think? See, that's about as condensed, concentrated sparkle as I've ever seen. I feel like I could honestly pull off this kind of look with my Once palette, but just not on this level with the, um, the glitteriness, obviously. Like if you translate this sparkly gold into more of a metallic gold, I do have that in the palette and I have the red and the brown. I'm sorry, ever since creating that palette, I look at a lot of things like, do I see my palette in that palette? It's kind of weird. I still appreciate all my other palettes and everything, but it's just, you, you start looking at things in a little different way. Okay, so I've layered in some gold. I'm not sure how well that's translating on camera, but it is a micro fine, densely packed shimmer in that shade. And then I think I'll take a little bit of this color and give myself that little sparkle. Now, do you see that, what I'm talking about here? It's more of a glittery look to these three shades out here. Like it looks like you just kind of applied a fine golden glitter around your inner corner. I'm just pointing it out, just letting you know. I feel a lot of opportunity with this palette, I really do. I think there are different, really intense, sparkly, ultra glam looks you could do with this. Now I'm gonna take some of this uh, lighter brown and go under my eye. But I think if you're not all about that, if you're not about this ultra glamorous glitzy look, this might not be the palette for you. <laughs> it's like glitzy but based in sort of a neutral comfort zone place, I would say. Because you do have your plum and your browns that you can kind of link everything back to, you know? It's not like, okay, we're gonna be glitter and we're gonna be really, really bright colors. So there's sort of this neutral basis here. This is the kind of look where I feel like I actually want people to come up close. Like, come in close, look at actually what's going on on the inner part of my lid. <laughs> I gotta hustle up here because it's gonna be time to get Nookie ready for school. Okay. I'm doing my Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Highlight here. Um, the other day I went with a murky kind of dark bronzy brown in my lower inner rim, and I did like that, but with so much red in this look, I kind of like a brighter lower inner rim. And then I think I'm gonna let the focus of this look kind of be my shadow. And I'm gonna curl my lashes, and I have my NARS Climax Mascara, which this was not ordered as part of this haul. This was something that I got in PR. It is available at Sephora. Um, but I knew I wanted to start trying this. I used it yesterday and was really impressed. Yes, even on sick days, I still do put on makeup. <laughs> I really like the brush. It's kind of like a natural bristle brush, not too huge. This is a heavy palette just to hold to see to do my mascara. It builds up quick though, quickly. Kind of like It Cosmetics Superhero does. And it kind of has that same sort of look actually. Just a lot of length, good thickness, but not in a clumpy, type manner. And I like two coats of this stuff, so I'll go back and add a little more. But I've been digging it. I hope you guys understand I'm not really attempting to pass along a review on this Pat McGrath palette yet because I feel like I've only dipped my toe into what it can possibly do. But um, 
the vibe that I get with it is that you could get these types of looks from other palettes. You really could, but as far as finishes go and textures, that's where this is kind of on another level. The way the shimmer is in some of these shades and the fine kind of glitter as well, like that's kind of unique. And it hung on my eyes better than most any other shadow of that type that I've tried. So that's what kind of sets it apart is not so much the shades, but the textures. Just my two cents here. So I'm going back. I think this mascara layers really well. I mean, this makes my lashes look big, I feel. And then I'm gonna do a little CoverGirl Clump Crusher Water Resistant on the lowers. Lower lash line is pretty minimal with this look today. I'm just going for a touch of glam. Like, I'm just going preschool drop-off glam. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I haven't talked about this. We hit a million subscribers on Friday night. I was live on Instagram when it happened. It was crazy. It was mind-blowing that we did that. It was so fun because I was on Twitter and so many of us were tweeting back and forth, like we're getting closer and closer. How is this happening so fast? But it was just ticking up there and then we got really close within like, I don't know, 60 or something and so I got on Instagram live and we were chatting and then before we know it we were there It was just crazy, but thank you everybody who subscribed I feel like I want to do something really special to mark this like either dedicate a video to it or just do something But I, I don't know what yet. Okay I got two Pat McGrath lip products. The packaging of the lipstick is to die for I love this lip at the closure. The only thing it's missing is an actual magnetic closure, but I can't take anything away from that tube. It's gorgeous. And then the lip gloss. I'm not sure what these individual little logos here actually mean. This color is called um, Flesh 4. I want to try on the gloss alone for you first so you can see what that actually looks like because it looks like it'd be dark brown, but there is some sheerness. Think of this like dark, dusty rose. Feels a lot like the M Cosmetics glosses, only maybe a little thinner. But I like it for like a soft colored fall gloss, you know? I feel like this is gonna work so well with a lot of fall looks. Pretty, it's shiny. I wore it yesterday and my lips were dry as all get out and I actually felt comfortable on my lips. It's a nice feeling gloss. So I just wanted you to see that, see what kind of level of color and shine it gives you. And now I wanna show you the lipstick and this is in the shade Unfaithful 408. It's a beautiful stick. Instead of being dented in on that flat side where you'll put it on your lips, it's coming out just a little bit. Just the tiny details about this brand are so beautiful. But this shade I also got with fall in mind. Look at this. Deep berry, but not too like pinky or purpley. You know what I mean? Not that I don't love those kinds of shades, but I feel like I have those kinds of shades a lot. Don't you love that richness? It's like a teeny splash of vampiness to the look, but not too much. I'd wear this out of the house with darn near any look. It feels super creamy. It's almost hard to tell though, like to compare the texture of this to other things because the texture of my lips is not good right now. They are rough. That's what we're working with today, guys. Thank you so much for watching this video. I feel like we had some really interesting products to experiment with today. I'm really having fun implementing this Hollywood Flawless Filter in different ways and seeing how I like it best. I'm gonna be experimenting with my mothership palette as well. And this loose powder also. I didn't give this a lot of chat, but I am using a powder in some elements of my look pretty much every day, so that's going to definitely get experimented with too. Let me know your feedback on any of these products if you've tried them, and I will see you very soon. Bye!